Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear, I'm JB, giving you the best tips to survive life in and out of the garage. In this video, we're giving this Toro a tune-up. And before we get rolling, if you're feeling the vibe and you want to be part of the tribe, subscribe. Time to get started. This is probably one of my favorite mowers of all time. And this specific mower has quite the history with me. My uncle purchased this mower for $519 back in 1999. What's really cool here is that I told my family I was doing a video on this mower and they actually dug through some old files and found the receipt that had been handed down to them. You can see here that he traded in his old mower for a $75 discount. We also found two pictures of the mower that he took when he first got it. Pretty awesome. And he mowed with it for a handful of years. Then I used it to cut several lawns per week for about seven years while I was in college with my landscaping business. After that, my dad owned it for about three years. Then my brother for one, and that was a hard year for it. Then I did a tune-up on it and then gave it to my brother-in-law who's had it for the last seven years. And here it is back in front of me today. This mower has so many hours on it, it's remarkable. It's basically the equivalent of a car with 400,000 miles on it. And these old Toro Super Recyclers were pretty bulletproof for their time. Aluminum decks, their rear wheel drive, easy drop shifting bale transmissions, and this here is a cheater strap so that way you can stop the transmission, make a turn, and then grab it again and take off. This Toro used to have an electric start, and it still has the starter motor down here, but if I remember correctly, the wiring got all beat up and the battery stopped working on this unit. So we ripped it out and now you just pull started. Plus these super recyclers with the kickers underneath the deck really mulch up the clippings well, barely leaving a clipping behind. Plus these six horsepower Briggs and Stratton engines can pretty much last forever with only minor care. Parts are still available for these mowers and if you take care of them, they can last a really, really long time. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Now you're probably asking JB, what seems to be the problem here? Well, it's a hard start and it kind of idles rough. Yes, it is a little dirty, but my job today is to get it running well. Let's give it a pull. Okay, so that was a tough start, and then when it finally did start, it shortly after died. Sounds like a carburetor cleaning, a spark plug check, and an oil change if you ask me. <laughs> Using a 516 socket, we're gonna take this off with our impact driver. Get that cover out of the way. Well, this could be part of the problem. This could use a replacement, but what I'm gonna do is just take my air gun and blow this thing out for the meantime and tell my brother-in-law to get another one. Then we got three bolts right here, here, and here. Slip this off. There's our carburetor. Then we're gonna take this cover, unscrew it, and peel it off. Then I'm gonna unhook the fuel line and start draining the gas. So while this gas is draining, it's important to note where your linkages meet up with the carburetor. In this case, there's only one hole for this linkage to connect to, so that's where it's gotta go. Next, we're gonna unbolt the carburetor. There's one bolt here on this side, and then one right here on this side. Unhook it. And there is our carburetor. Let's see what we need here. Boom, boom. Bingo. So here we go with the carburetor. First step, we're gonna take this bowl nut off. A little bit of gas dripping out. There you go. Carefully remove the bowl. There we go, not too dirty inside. This looks promising, people. Take this bowl seal off very carefully. Don't wanna rip these, there we go. Perfect, set that off to the side. Next step, we gotta take this pin out right here holding the float on. So I'm gonna take my pliers here and simply press it down. Then we're gonna take our pliers. There you go, this guy's in there. Let go, thank you. Take out our float and there is our needle. And this all looks pretty clean inside. It's not too bad. One of these tiny jets in there could be clogged up and that could be causing the problem. All right, let's get this baby sprayed up. I'm gonna take my needle nose pliers, put them through the hole, hold it like that, and then just start getting all this excess exterior gunk off. Looks pretty good to me. Next, we're gonna spray inside these little jets in the tube. Oh yeah, it's coming right out through the center emulsion tube. Then we'll hit the fuel line. Hit it backwards. Little jet here on the side. And we can see it's coming right out of here out of this jet, so we'll spray back into that. 
Next, we're gonna spray inside the carburetor. Hit this little jet here off to the side. This jet here on this side. Then we'll hit the butterfly side. Spray down here on the side of the emulsion tube. Then we'll just do a quick inside cleaning. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is perfectly clean. Next, we're gonna take our bowl, grab that with some needle nose pliers, and give it a quick spray down. Looks pretty good to me. Next, we're gonna grab our bull bolt, and if you look carefully, it's got a hole here on this side, a hole here on this side, and then a hole on the bottom. We gotta spray all those out. We got juice flowing out of both sides, we're good. Hose it off real fast. Grab our pin, spray that off real fast, set that off to the side. Take our needle, spray that baby off real quick. Done, take our float. This guy's pretty dirty, but most of that's from my own gloves. Done deal. Pearly white, baby. And then our bowl gasket looks really good, so we're gonna reuse this. So now, let's blow dry all this stuff. Here's our bowl bolt. We're gonna hold onto this tight so nothing blows out of our hands. Feel it coming right through on the other end with the air. Next, our bowl. Next, we have our float. Our needle. And then we're gonna take the carburetor itself and blow out every single port inside and out. Looks good to me. These carburetors are so easy to work on. That's why I like working on them. We're gonna take our float and our needle. We're gonna reinsert the needle onto this little track here. I'm gonna hold it there with my finger. I'm gonna drop that needle into this hole and then line up my pinholes. Take my pin, line that baby back up. Take my pliers and push it back in. Just like that, boom, we have a working float. Then I'm gonna take my bowl seal, put that carefully back around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. Take my bowl, put it back on top. Then I'm gonna take my bowl bolt, pop that baby back in, and snug it down. Looks good to me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get this baby back on. So now the first step to put this back on is reinsert our linkage. Get that back in, line it back up. Take your two carburetor bolts, get them in where they gotta go. I'm gonna loosely send in the first one. And then the second. Get them in nice and snug. You don't gotta over tighten them, just a little bit. There we go. Next, we're gonna reconnect the fuel line, stick it back on, and then clamp it back down. Now we're coming back here to the workbench because I have this primer housing down here at the bottom. It's not too bad, but on the back, ugh, we gotta clean this baby up. I'm gonna take some carb cleaner and hose it down. Not too bad. That'll do. And then we'll clean out our air filter cover. We're gonna blow out our cover, and then our primer housing. Then we're gonna reinstall our primer housing, but make sure you connect this tube to this spout right here. Slide her on, get your screws lined up, and send them in. Then from here, take your air filter, pop that back on, and I know again, that's not the best one, but it'll do for the time being. And then simply reinstall your cover. Screw it down, we're good there. Then we'll slide our cover back on, and screw it down. Next, we're gonna pull out our spark plug. We're gonna take her out and have a look at it. Oh yeah, we're definitely in need of a cleaning. We're gonna reinstall our spark plug. Next, we're gonna do an oil change on this thing. We're gonna pull out the dipstick. Oh yeah, that could use some oil. Looked a little low and a little dirty. Now this is about all the oil inside this machine. This is something he's gonna have to keep an eye on, but we are gonna refill it. We're gonna fill this more back up with some 5W30 full synthetic motor oil. And we're gonna finish this up by pouring in some ethanol free gas. All right, let's see if we can get her started up. It's getting a little dark out. Hopefully it don't tick off the neighbors. First pull, baby.
This mower is all set. My brother-in-law should be able to get plenty of more years out of this thing, no problem. It's really pretty incredible that this mower is 22 years old and still running great. Let me know down in the comments if you think I should hold this mower hostage and not give it back to my brother-in-law. I'll have all the tools that I use to get this job done linked down below in the description. Don't forget to give me one of these. And for more cool garage gear videos, check out my links right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the garage.